Hello and welcome to the Wedding Dish Podcast. Grab your fork and knife and take a seat at our table as we dish on all things weddings. You'll hear stories and tips from real couples and wedding pros about love, life, and entrepreneurship. I'm Sarah Alipin. I am the host of The Wedding Dish and CEO of Photos from the Hardy and District Bliss. And today I am really excited to have a very interesting conversation. Um, so I'm joined by Susan, who is the um, business owner behind Personal Life Media Inc. Um, she is a publisher, she owns a supplement company, and really, what we're going to talk about today is sex. So buckle up. Susan, thank you so much for being here today. Sarah, I was so excited to come do a show with you. First of all, you have a great podcast. And secondly, boy, the more opportunity that I have to get in front of people when they're just starting their you know, their, their, their marriage and lay down a foundation for them, a structure that makes it easy to do. What I like to do is I, I call it keeping your sex life on an upward pleasure spiral where sex keeps getting better and better and better through the years instead of swirling down the toilet and ending in divorce like you're seeing your friends go through. I don't want that for your listeners. I want you to have blissful, sensual, erotic, heart-connected, conscious, Love making that grows deeper and stronger through the years. So um, yeah, let's let's lay down some really great foundations today. Um, I want to let you know that um, just by way of a little introduction to who I am, I am a 60-year-old married woman. I've been with my husband for 30 years. We have been through ups and downs and ups and downs. As a matter of fact, just this morning before I started recording this show, we were having a fight. And we don't really fight. We were having a an intense discussion with a lot of emotion, most of it coming from me where my husband was listening to me and he was telling me, he was calling me on my bull. And um, at the same time, we're packing up to go to our second home and we're getting things done and we're having normal conversations. And then I'm coming and chasing him down and blah, 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 telling him something else. And <laughs> he's dealing with that and trying to get his the car packed up. And, you know, we have a very, and, and it's an extremely fraught argument that is, um, that, that involves other people as well. Uh, feelings are getting hurt all around. There's big issues happening. And the only way we can do that, and the only way that I can speak completely unfiltered, and so can he, is that about 11 years into our marriage, we had lost our way. We had lost our way. And we had lost our way because I wasn't having orgasms from intercourse. And I didn't want to have intercourse after 11 years of doing it without orgasms. I mean, I could give myself an orgasm with a vibrator, but I just was like, it felt like work. It wasn't fun. It was great for him. He had an orgasm every time. He couldn't <laughs> understand why I didn't want to be with him. Why I was avoiding him. At one point, he thought that maybe I was a lesbian. You know, he was oh, like, how no. could you not want sex, you know? And he emotionally checked out. He found a woman who was in a sexless marriage and they started having sex so he could stay in the marriage with me so we wouldn't break our marriage up. And it just it just went to hell in a handbasket for us. And that's not the only rough spot we've been in. We've been in many rough spots together. But what we learned in that moment was we had gotten a book from Brad Blanton called Radical Honesty. And we were like, if we don't start telling each other the truth, if we don't stop withholding and walking on eggshells and stuffing our feelings and all that stuff, if we just don't get clear and clean with each other, our marriage isn't going to make it. And for us, it was about our sex life. The other stuff was fine. It was our sex life that was the problem. So I told him, every time you put your penis in me, it takes my turn on off. It turns me off. It brings me down. And it was so hard for him to hear. And we went to therapists and dealt with my abuse issues. And then we started going to sex workshops and learning how to have sex. We learned how to have conscious, heart-connected lovemaking. And it turned out to be just what we needed. We didn't know what we were doing. 
We were just the blind leading the blind. Sex education in our country is about fear and abstinence. No more. Yep. It's yep. not about transforming friction into connection. And the pornography business does a disservice to us, as does Hollywood. They don't show love making. So it was in that moment when we came back together and started having great sex almost immediately, like it hardly took anything for us to have great sex. We did what I call crossing the gasm chasm, where Dr. Lori Mintz did a TED talk called the orgasm gap, how easy it is for guys and how hard it is for women to have an orgasm from intercourse. And if you're in a heterosexual monogamous relationship, you need to be doing that. You need to be having intercourse with your partner. So when sex experts are like, hey, intercourse isn't a big thing. You just focus on oral, use your, I'm like, are you married to a dude with a penis? Because you can't get away with that shit in my house, right? I mean, <laughs> that's not going to happen. My man would be miserable if I don't have sex with him. He would like to have sex every day. Most guys would. And that's one of the things I want to talk about on the show. So it ended up that once we learned how to do the, you know, how to cross the gasm chasm, we ended up really igniting our sex life and realizing that great sex requires learning new skills as a couple together. But we don't know. And when we admit we don't know, and we begin the journey of learning, then we have incredible experiences together that deepen our connection, deepen our intimacy, but they cannot happen without true honesty. And the number one thing that a couple needs to survive in a marriage is the ability to say anything to the other person and have the other person be willing to hear it and take it in, even in, you know, emotional stress. So we ended up starting a company called Personal Life Media and publishing passionate lovemaking techniques, hiring the people from the workshops who taught us and transformed our sex life to bring those workshops and basically create them for people who couldn't go to a workshop and get naked and learn techniques, but would be willing to do it in their own home, watching some videos and audios and eBooks. So that's 15 years ago, our company, 20 years ago, the fix of our marriage. And we've been doing that ever since. And over the last 15 years, I have really begun to understand the difference between the masculine and feminine and their approach to sexuality. And I think the number one thing that I can do to set your listeners up for a lifetime of pleasure is not just encouraging total honesty, which actually turns out, this is quite interesting, Sarah. Tell me if you, tell me if this surprises you. The hardest part of being honest is that you have to tell how you feel and how when you say out loud how you really feel, you sound really shitty. You sound really petty. You sound really selfish. You sound really insecure. You sound, it's like all the seven deadly sins come out. And it's you admitting how how miserable you are. It's not telling them the truth about their foibles. It's your own humanity that comes out and is painful. Yeah. You're like, oh God, I wish I didn't feel like this. I, I hate being so petty. I hate being so insecure. That's what I'm going through right now. Yep. You know, so those are the ones that are at the top of my mind right now. It's just <laughs> it is a practice honesty because our culture, they, we just, we do not like to tell the truth. We gloss, I mean, Look at our politics today. My God, we had an insurrection in our government and half, 40% of our country doesn't even believe that happened. <laughs> We're fighting for our democracy. You know, it's like, I'm it's crazy. right outside DC. So <laughs> I probably couldn't get to work today because there were truckers <laughs> doing something about mandates that aren't even mandates anymore. I mean, everybody's going crazy. So the only thing you can do is tr invest in honesty in your home and Know that your bedroom experience is your personal life and nobody should shame you or tell you how to make love or any of those that make you feel bad about your body or any of those things. Yeah. I'm so with you on all of that. And I think we do, we have such a, a, a culture of shame. Um, you know, it's one of the reasons we don't like to be honest. It's one of the reasons um, that, you know, you have people who are people pleasers. It's one of the reasons that, um, that we end up, you know, hiding from problems instead of solving them. And it's definitely one of the reasons that we don't talk enough about sex. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yes. So where do you want to go from here? What would be the, I know we have a little bit of an agenda and I really want to honor what you want to talk about most. 
Well, I mean, first, I'm curious, and I know this isn't what we talked about before we started recording, but how did you become so passionate about educating people about sex and and really sharing i mean i know you have you have your personal story but really sharing that story that's a hard story to share yeah um well i just had so much sexual trauma and abuse in so many ways from you know, uh, my stepfather abusing me, uh, to dates, shaming me to my desire to have great sex never really happening for me. It's like, how I know it's out there. Tell me it's, you know, I believe, you know, and I, I could never quite get there. And, um, I think two things, number one, for whatever reason, I'm a natural born leader. And even when I was a little girl, I would I would say the thing that I knew everyone was thinking. I don't know why. I just have the courage to speak up. And I, I, my mom always instilled in me that I knew what I was doing. I was a smart I was a smart girl. And she's like, "You don't need my advice. You tell me what to do. You're you're just really good at figuring things out. You you have a good barometer." And so she made me believe in myself. So when I started Personal Life Media, I really started it as a publishing company, publishing the work of the experts who had been so profoundly positive for me and helping me cross my gasm chasm. And one of the things I want to say right here about orgasms from intercourse is that I'm, I'm presupposing that the majority, because the majority of people are in heterosexual monogamous relationships, that I'm going to just speak from that position, though I support the entire rainbow sparkle gender spectrum. And I support both the masculine and feminine being fully present in every human being because we have it all within us and we have all of our orgasms within us waiting to come out too. There's nothing outside of us that we need that we don't have right now to have the best, most deep intimacy and pleasure that we all deserve. That is our human right to pleasure. So... When I talk about the male and the female, I think it's very important to understand that I support all expression, but that it's just an easy shortcut and you'll get 99 if you're in a if you're in a same sex relationship, you will get if you're gender non-binary, any flavor, you will still get 99% of the benefit from what you're about to hear. So it just keeps it cleaner and simpler to talk man woman because and this is something that I really do want to get to, which is that we have been operating primarily in our culture and society and in most cultures who are even less evolved than we are here in the United States of America today. Um, women are treated terribly in other parts of the world, just terribly. Uh, but we have a lot of benefits. We've made a lot of progress, yet I think we're still, due to our lack of really solid education about intimacy and connection and pleasure, a pleasure-based sex education, we are still having sex in the, in the patriarchal way, the way men need to, based on how their bodies work versus the women or matriarchal way. So I really want to lay that down because each of us must teach our partner how we want to be made love to. So there are three, can I keep going? Yes, I'm sitting here just nodding so you okay. all know. Um, every, I'm agreeing with everything that Susan is saying right now. <laughs> Good. I'm so glad. Thank you. We women have to support each other in, in like, yes, let's hear about that. What do I, what have I been missing? And yeah, a lot of times, let I actually talk about it. <laughs> And what I feel like a lot of times when I do, when I do tell women, here's what I think you actually want. They're like, Jesus, that is what I want. And I never even figured that out, but yes. And what I know about men is they want to give us what we want. They want to make us happy. They are yeah. miserable when we're not sexually satisfied. They are miserable when we are unhappy. It is, it makes them crazy. They would give up their own pleasure for our pleasure. 99% yeah. of them. So let's give men the benefit of the doubt that they have been doing the best they can do. They didn't get any education either. And I'm here to write some of those inequities. So the first Good one is points. that men have a competitive advantage sexually. First thing is they're testosterone dominant and we have testosterone, but we're estrogen dominant as women. And men have the benefit of getting, they're horny every morning. They get an erection in the morning. They would like to have sex every day. And by sex, they mean 
penetrative intercourse because that feels incredible for them. Now, the second thing is, so, so they're horny every day. They have the benefit of that. We run on, a, as women, a 28-day cycle running with women who run with the moon. And we have our five-day horny window where we might initiate sex. But we have those other times when, for most women, they're like, I, did, I didn't really want to have sex. But then once we had it, I was glad we did. Women can really relate to that. And it's because we're not starting out horny. We need to be warmed up. But the problem is that our men, being testosterone dominant, they're focused on the goal, full speed ahead, they're ready to penetrate us, and unfortunately, as women, we're not there, and they penetrate us too quickly, and we don't even know that they're penetrating us too quickly. We can't get an arousal level in our body that allows us to finally have those orgasms from intercourse because we've had sex too fast our whole lives. We don't even know what we don't know. So one of the most important things is that for women, we have, men have a penis that has three erectile chambers in it. And those erectile chambers get filled with blood really, really fast. It's called hemodynamics and their hemodynamics are superior to ours with regard to sex. They're ready, boom, they're hard and they want to go. <laughs> For us, we actually have three erectile tissue systems in our vulva. If you peel the cover, the skin off of our lady parts, we have a clitoral um, erectile system. We have a urethral erectile system and we have a perineal erectile system. And they're literally wrapped around our vagina. The clitoris is not the tip that we're familiar with. It's a tip, a shaft, two arms, two legs. The G spot is not a spot. It's a long sponge that's like a spongy pool noodle that goes up above our vaginal opening. And our perineal sponge is between the bottom of our vagina and our rectum, which is why many women like pleasurable anal sex as well as vaginal sex. So what happens though is that he's got those straight shots that the blood can just go right down in and expand and lock off for a nice firm erection. We're like an English muffin. You have to get us out of the refrigerator. You have to slice us in half. You have to get the toaster out. You have to plug it in. You have to put the two parts in the toaster. You have to press it down. It pops up. It's not toasted enough. You got to press it down again and just watch it because you don't want to you don't want to burn it. Then you pop it up when it's just perfect. You get it out. You lay it on the plate. The butter is hard. You've got to slice the butter with the knife and you're like, kirk, on the butter dish. You get the butter, you stick it on the muffin, you smash the two pieces together and you wait until the butter melts into all the nooks and crannies. And then you get to have the English muffin. <laughs> I mean, that's I our genital that. system. That is our genital system because we have the same amount of erectile tissue as our male body partners. And why erectile tissue and blood flow is so important. As a matter of fact, my supplement company, my number one product that I sell is a blood flow, an organic blood flow supplement. It's called a nitric oxide booster made with organic fruit and vegetables because women get dry, they get painful sex, their tissue thins as they age. And I'm sure you have a lot of women re-entering marriage who've been married before and they're in their perimenopause, menopause and beyond who are like, I'm worried that I'm going to be able to have all this intercourse. I'm, it's going to hurt me. And it's actually not all hormone. It's actually mostly loss of nitric oxide production that because our vagina has to lubricate through blood plasma, the blood has to be recruited to the genitals. Our genitals have to get plumped up with blood flow. And it takes a minute. It just takes a minute. That's why that axiom of 20 minutes of foreplay is like the bare minimum of what we need. That's like the bare minimum. And that's if it's a concerted effort of direct hands-on, hands-on yoni. And by yoni, I mean our genital system. I mean the vagina, the vulva, the three clitoral structures, the all the labia, inner and outer, our groin, our sweet cheeks, our mons venus, our inner thighs, our breasts, our nipples, our necks, our lips, our tongues. You know, we need all of these things touched, but not first, which is the next point about what I want to talk about, which is 
why men grab our crotches and why that's so annoying to us and why that's not a turn on. So when the blood can flow into all of those erectile chambers and we allow it the time to do that, it plumps up. And when it plumps up, it has more surface area. And when it's touched, that sends way more pleasure signals to the brain. So that's what allows us to cross the gasm chasm, bridge that orgasm gap, start having orgasms from intercourse. I did a series on my Better Lover channel, betterlover.com. I've got hundreds of free videos. You can type in intercourse, penetration, orgasm, and you can get all of the things that will help you cross the gasm chasm because every woman can come from intercourse without even touching the tip of her clitoris. It's simply a learned skill. There are 20 kinds of orgasms that the human body can have, and the 20th one is wild card. So there's a lifetime of learning and expanding our orgasmic capacity. And if we have a great partner and do it together, it is so much fun and it keeps the energy high in our sex life. Because bedroom boredom is really what tanks sex lives. If you're not getting ultimate pleasure, if you're not really sexually satisfied, if you're just having sex for him, you're putting a brick in the wall of your future sexless marriage and probably divorce, emotional disconnection, dissolution of affection. So you have to fight for what you need in the relationship. And one of the things you need is your yoni, which is a tantric sex word for your genitals, all the parts, you need that to be stimulated, touched, licked, rubbed, vibrated, tickled, jiggled, rocked, pleasured, cupped, smoothed, kneaded, you know, add more words like that forever to get you a clitoral hard-on, a vulva hard-on, a yoni hard-on. You need your own erection and you have to allow the time it takes to get there. And one of the things that I do as, met, as much as I can, because even me, a sex expert, I will fake an orgasm. I will amp up and pretend I'm coming better than I'm really coming to please my partner. And I hate when I do that and I have to fight myself to stop doing that. Even to this day, I fall into the trap of doing that sometimes because I want him to be happy. I want him to know I love him. I want him to think he's making me feel good. And he's making me feel good, but he's not making me feel great. But it's like, I really know he needs to have sex. And so I'm doing this and I have to fight every urge to be a people pleaser and really just let my body's natural responses speak for themselves and ask for what I really need in the moment and stop pushing myself and my needs down for my partner's needs. We both have to completely get our needs met. And the more I can resist doing that, I don't do it very often. I only do it one, maybe once a year at this point. I find myself being like, oh, cut that shit out. What's really going on with you? What do you need right now? Because for most women, and this is another piece of that, what men want, what women want, he's ready to go. So he's grabbing us and he's, it doesn't feel good when we get grabbed, when, we, when it's like immediate finger or tongue right on our clitoral tip. That's like, it's too much for us. We need to be held. We need to, our bodies to be stroked. We need our feet to be rubbed. We need our hair to be caressed. We need our eyelids kissed. We need sweet kisses before our, he sticks his tongue in our mouth. Not all the time, because we, we have those cycles where sometimes we want to be taken. We want to be ravished. We're going to ravish him. And that's great too. But the times when we need those things, we must allow ourselves to have them. If we're on his timetable, We'll never have the satisfying sex we want. We'll never cross the gasm chasm. So when you get the kind of foreplay that you really need in that moment, whatever that is, when you tune into your body and you listen to her, she's screaming at you. If you don't know what you want, it's because you're not listening. You know if you have to fart. You know if your tummy's upset. You know if you have a headache. You know if your mouth is dry. You know if your lips are chapped. You know if your feet hurt. You also know what your vulva wants. You also know what she's asking. 
And so what I do is I, I, I say to women, I say to men, slow down, slow down some more, slow down even more, then go even slower. And that helps us build up our turn on and stair step our arousal. And it really helps us have the pleasure that we need to keep wanting sex. Oh yeah, sure. For the first couple of months, couple of years, you've got new relationship energy, your love chemicals are thrumming, your dopamine, your serotonin, your prolactin, your oxytocin, they're all operating in high gear and you're in love and it feels great. But one day you're going to wake up and be like, meh, <laughs> you're going to have to really work hard to talk me into it. And that's when you must kick into, and even before that, this total honesty piece that I started out talking about. I would ask you, Sarah, what do you think it is that keeps people from asking for what they need in the bedroom and being willing to hear feedback? I'm curious if, well, I would assume that a lot of it is fear based. Um, some of it could be shame based. Um, and I would also assume that a lot of it's stuff that was taught to us in American culture. And I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting isn't it. So I'll keep my mouth shut and suck it up. Yeah. That really resonates, doesn't it? And if I tell him what, if I give him a correction, his ego gets hurt. He, he, he collapses and it ruins the moment. So I'll just keep my mouth shut. Big one, right? Yeah. That's a big thing for women. Huge. So I have a technique. One of my top selling books is Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials to Connected Sex. And I want to give that to your listeners. Um, I normally don't give it away because you can buy it on Amazon, but I want to give it to your listeners because I think it's so important in setting a solid foundation of what are the, mo the six most important things that turn your mate into your sexual soulmate. So that's my gift for your listeners today as well. And it's at sexualsoulmatesbook.com. And if I got that wrong, it might be sexualsoulmatebook.com. It's either S or it's like a plural or single. We'll link to only. it. Don't worry. Yeah, link to it. <laughs> Thank you. I have so many URLs. I can't always re remember them all. Um, but that's a very, very good place to start when you're creating your solid foundation. You're starting with honesty. And I'm going to get into how can you be honest in the bedroom right now? And this technique comes from that book. And that this technique is called the Sexual Soulmate Pact. P-A-C-T, like an agreement. And if there's anything else that I want you to do, because what I'm asking for your listeners to do is to start out on the right foot in your relationship by telling your truth and asking your partner to tell their truth and being willing to withstand the discomfort of honesty and realizing that you end up benefiting more from it than the momentary discomforts of hearing things that sometimes are like, ah, it's nothing. You can, you grow the muscle of being able to be honest. The sexual soulmate pact is being honest in the bedroom. And it, it's kind of a ninja technique that works really well because it compensates for this issue that when we raise our boys, we raise them in a pecking order. Suck it up. Don't be a baby. No crying. They end up with two emotions they're allowed to have, anger and victimhood. And this is what is a problem because when they are not winning, they, they're so black and white, it's losing. They're losing. They did it wrong. They failed. They're so hard on themselves. They're either winning or losing. There's no in between. Yeah. So when they get a feedback in the bedroom, they feel like they failed. They get crushed and it rocks their world and they take it personally. And so the trick with the sexual soulmate pact, and you can just simply download that if you want to as a standalone, that's at sexualsoulmatepact.com. I think that's a good way to do that one if you're going to go through it with your husband or wife and make this agreement. Just take that piece right out of it. It has a little bit more color to it. But essentially what it does is it makes 
Our partners understand that we're not turned on from the get-go like they are. We don't want them grabbing us immediately. We want them to work their way from the outside in like a bullseye, outer ring first, middle ring second, then the creamy filling in the center, third. That we need them to slow down, that we need to get our own erection. Um, All of these things are things that really help them. And that we're on this 28-day moon cycle, which means that what he did last time we had sex is not going to work this time. And that's not that he's doing anything wrong. It's that we change a lot more than he does. He's got the benefit in some ways of being steady state. And because he's testosterone and he's so goal-oriented, he can forget anything and everything and just focus on sex, where we're estrogen, and estrogen is a molecule, a protective molecule, because we are prey as women. It keeps us safe because it's looking, it's our reticular activation system looking for all the things that can go wrong, worrying about everything. We need him to get us out of our head and into our body. And then we need to listen to our body and tell him, Okay, here's what she's telling me she wants today. Here's what she needs. I've got this little stitch in my mons. I need you to need that little spot. You know that little spot that always bothers me? I'm, I just need that taken care of. Can you pull my left leg and pop it out of the hip socket so I can get my pelvis to open? Can you rub my occipital lobes because I was hunched over my desk writing that report and I can't relax and give you a blow job, right? You know, yep. what do you need? What do you need to relax? Tell me, baby. Give it to me. Give me the clues. When he's when he can move from failure, I failed. To, oh God, I love her feedback. Everything she tells me helps me win and do the great job I want to do. Tell me more, baby. How's this? Did I get it? Is it soft enough? Do you want it here? Is it up to the left? Am I on the spot? What do you need? And then it starts to get him in his own body telling you how he wants you to give him pleasure. And then there's nothing that can't be said in the bedroom. And all of a sudden, you've got the data and the information because it's ever changing because you are maturing every single day. You are growing. You are learning. You're getting better in bed together. You're practicing new things. You're trying stuff that didn't work and laughing about it later and giving it another shot. And then it went great. You are in a great experimentation of mutually co created pleasure with a platform of honesty. And that sexual soulmate pact, I could teach you 200 techniques and none of them are any good. If you can't give your partner feedback on what feels good in the moment, understanding that you are living in an animal body that's run by hormones and sugar and sleep and stress, and you (laughs) got to listen to her and clue him in because how could he know? He can't know. So (laughs) that's best. I mean, I can teach it sex techniques, but I give away so many of them free that you can just come to my website. There's a million of them at Better Lover. There's a million of them at Personal Life Media. You don't have to buy anything ever from me. But if you'll just do me this one favor of risking your vulnerability to, to, to have the honesty in a society that doesn't reward it, because nothing matters more than you and your partner. That's, that's what you have. You, you and your partner, and maybe if you're lucky, your family. That's you getting through this life together. Get through it with fun and joy and pleasure and orgasms and learning and body confidence and heart connection and relaxation and orgasms and more orgasms. That, <laughs> that I think, is how you get there. That's what we wish for you all out there. Orgasms yes. and more orgasms and radical honesty. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So there you go. That's my Susan Bratton advice. You can follow me on Instagram at Susan Bratton. Go to betterlover.com. Links will be in the thing. Boom. Awesome. Susan, this has been such a fun conversation. I wish you all that are listening and not watching the video of this could see how much I'm just nodding. I look like I'm a bobblehead today. <laughs> it's like when you hear when you hear that you're like, "Praise the Lord. Yes, yes, preach, preach. It's gospel." <laughs> exactly. 
Oh my gosh. Well, Susan, thank you so much for joining me today. This was an awesome conversation. I appreciate your expertise. I appreciate your honesty and vulnerability in discussing this because it is something, you know, it it is. It, it's vulnerable. It can be scary. It's something we're taught not to discuss. And I, just, I really appreciate you taking the time today to, to share some insight and some tips with our audience at The Wedding Dish. My pleasure. All right, everybody. Well, give us a follow, rate, and review. Um, you will have all of the links to follow Susan and um, and get in touch with her and grab her free book for you, which was super generous. Thank you so much for sharing that. And have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody. Until next time, cheers.